Right, guys just back here with another video so today i wanted to kind of make a, a video just to kind of you know kind of correct some of the not correct the concern but just kind of ease the concern that a lot of canadians do have you know ever since um you know the liberals basically you know won the election in france when all the other other parties kind of combined together to stop the conservatives they've been thinking it's going to happen here too and i've made a video about this before just covering it but i want to actually break it down by the numbers and just explain to you that Pierre Polyev is virtually unstoppable. Now, before I do get into that, I also want to make it very clear that I am not promoting complacency here. We still need, even if it looks like Pierre Polyev is going to win every seat, we still need to get out and vote like we're losing. We need to get out and vote like the country is depending on it because it is. So just before we do get to breaking down these numbers, please don't forget to like and subscribe. It really does help grow the channel. And also leave your questions, comments, and general thoughts uh, just in the comment section because I do enjoy engaging with you guys as well. So let's just say these averages and the average numbers here come to fruition, right? So 220 uh, seats for the Conservatives, 64 uh, for the Liberals, 42 for the Bloc, 15 for the NDP, and 2 for the Greens. Even if all these parties combined their seats together, which they can't even really do, but if they somehow could, it's still only 140. They're still not even close to getting to Pierre Polyev. And all you need is 172 seats for a majority, which Pierre Polyev is almost certainly to get as long as we don't get complacent. That being said, even if the Liberals, the Bloc, the NDP, and the Greens all hit their high end number, it's about 180. And if the Conservatives underperformed and got 192, they still win a majority. But again, all these seats, they can't even combine to get 180 because it's just, it's not possible for the, you know, let's just say that the Liberals, it'll drop out of a riding where the NDP is leading in hopes that the Liberal vote goes to the NDP to beat the Conservatives. That's not going to happen because the Liberals don't like Jagmeet Singh and vice versa, right? If the NDP dropped out because the Liberals were ahead in a riding, but they were down to the Conservatives, thinking that the NDP vote would go to the Liberals, it's not because the NDP doesn't like Trudeau. Those people will stay home. So even if they try to do something like that, it's done. It's over. They can't even get to that 180 because once Pierre Polyev gets to that 220 or even 192, that's majority. That's it. Not to mention, I think the Liberals and the NDP specifically are going to massively underperform. And I think the Conservatives are going to massively overperform. I mean, this poll shows 220. I honestly really do think it's going to be 250, man, at least. I really, really think it. A lot of people are now starting to agree with this, putting out polls where it's showing you know, 240, 245. And again, we got another year of Trudeau making this country even worse. So again, these numbers are just going to go up. Now, I also made a video yesterday covering the uh, breakdown by age with 18 to 34 year olds, but I did not cover the female versus male voters and all the other age groups, which I'm going to do for you right now. So even with female voters, conservatives at 38 percent. And again, if this group combined the liberals and the NDP, which they will not. Yeah, they would have, you know, just uh, what 47 percent of the vote versus 38 percent of the vote. But again. If these groups try to, the Liberals and the NDP try to combine their votes together and try to take from the Conservatives, there's going to be some of these ladies who just stay home, right? A lot of NDP voters feel like the, the Conservatives and the Liberals are basically the same. They're both hurting the country. They're not going to go out and vote for the Liberals because Trudeau says he wants them to. And if the NDP candidate in, that, in those ridings drop out, those voters will stay home. Now, again, over to the male voters, 49% conservative, 22% for the liberals, 13% for the NDP. So with these two combined, I mean, again, it's just there's no path for the liberal and the NDP and that they're not going to merge parties. It's not happening. Just want to make this very, very clear. So now let's go over to the breakdown by age group. I did cover this yesterday with the 18 to 34 year olds, generally speaking, very liberal, 47% for the conservatives, which is amazing. And again, 23% for the Liberals, 14 for the, sorry, 23 for the NDP, 14 for the Liberals. Now, my age group, 35 to 54 year olds, 45% conservative, 21 liberal, 19 for the NDP. The saddest part of this poll, in my opinion, and again, I know I have a lot of followers, a lot of subscribers who are boomers. I am not talking about you guys. 
right? Because you guys are part of this 41% here. I have no problem with that. But I got a big problem with this number here. How in the world are boomers voting liberal at this point? I thought, like I made a point yesterday too in a video where it's like, you know, if you're, uh, if you're young and you're conservative, you don't have a heart. But if you're old and liberal, you don't have a brain. Well, apparently a lot of Canadian boomers don't have a goddamn brain. Like, what's happening here? How could you see what's going on and then still con consider voting liberal? I don't get it. Is it because, well, you know, they're not really affected like young people are? I mean, young people have no hope and no future in Canada under Trudeau. Well, the boomers, you know, they're fine. They already got their houses. They already got their pension, their retirement funds. Maybe that's why. I, but again, if you're a boomer listening to this channel, please let me know in the comment section, like, what's going on with boomers? And I got a lot of problems with boomers, generally speaking. But again, a lot of them, most of them are, you know, they have common sense. But 30%, this is where the liberals are doing the best with boomers. You got to get called out for that. And again, not you who are not liberals, but for the boomers who are, what are you thinking? Do you not care about the children? Do you not care about your grandchildren, your nieces, your nephews? Do you want them to be forever renters? Do you want them to be subject to all this crime? It doesn't make any sense. You want them to not be able to afford a rent? Do you not want them to have uh, a paychecks coming in that have decent buying power? Our dollar sucks because everything is so goddamn expensive. One dollar is not worth what it used to be. Back when these boomers were young, and now that's been destroyed and they're voting for it. Please, for the love of God, explain this to me. I don't get it. I'll never understand. Hopefully some of you guys have some answers for me, but I mean, it doesn't make any sense. But thankfully, young people are waking up. Also, you have Gen Alpha, the next generation where, you know, they're children right now. But as of, I believe, 2029, the ones who were born in 2011 are going to be 18. They're going to be able to vote too. Or they're going to start that generation is going to be able to start voting. And trust me when I say this, they are probably going to be the most you know, populous or libertarian or conservative little bastards you've ever seen in your life. No chance they're going to grow up and go liberal or NDP after what they did to them during the lockdown. They're going to remember that and they're going to start voting against it in a big way. Which is very, very interesting. And I, I'm very excited for that, but especially in 2033, when you'll have, you know, even more of them able to vote, even more of them will turn 18 and, you know, 19 and 20, and they're going to be voting and they're going to come out and they're going to, they're going to show the NDP and the liberal who's, who's boss here. And this is what we need. Canadian citizens showing the government who the real boss is, which is us. And we don't seem to understand that. They will. So if you think the liberal and the NDP party is in trouble now, just wait. Unless they change things around, right? If they actually become a center of left party, they can make a comeback here. But even then, I think a lot of people, and I've heard it in the comment section because I do read most comments, I've seen people say, I'm done with the liberals. I voted liberal my whole life. I voted NDP my whole life, and I'm done. I'm never voting for them again, no matter what happens. Some of them probably will go back if the liberals and the NDP make a change. If the NDP stopped being a bunch of goddamn socialists, they'd get more votes. If the liberals were, would stop trying to be communist wannabes, they would get more votes. But all they want to do is they want to censor people. Look at Bill C-63. They want to destroy the middle class, which has been, it's happening now in real time. Most people are in the middle class. So when you destroy most people, of course they're going to turn on you. And the liberals, I think they understand that. I just don't think they care. I think there is an agenda for them and the NDP to try to destroy this country so that they, they can have massive control. Think about it, right? The more intelligent people are, the more healthy people are, the less they need the government. They can figure things out on their own and they're able-bodied, they can work. And as long as the government doesn't screw that up, they'd be fine but they, they did screw it up and now you have the liberal or the, the conservatives rather with this you know common sense kind of slogan they're going well yeah because all you need is common sense to know that this is wrong and the more that people are sick and the more that people are impoverished the more they're going to need the government the government then becomes much bigger and more powerful and then eventually you can't even vote it out and again, for all you socialist and communist wannabes, there's plenty of countries like that in this world for you to go live in. Go live there. Don't just try to destroy this country.
we're not going to let you do it. So just go move to China where they'll put people in jail for thoughts. Go move to Russia where they unalive people for real journalism. Go ahead and go live there. That's what you want. You're a socialist or you're a communist. Go live there. Go live in Venezuela. Go live in Cuba. See what happens. See how you actually like it. And then you go, oh, wait a minute. We can't vote it out. Once it's once communism gets in, you cannot vote it out. Think about that for a second. Anyway, I'm going to stop this video there. Um, let me know what you guys think in the comment section about these numbers. And again, please help me understand the, this, these, the, the boomer group here with the 30%. It, it blows my mind. Um, also, please don't forget to like and subscribe as it really helps grow the channel. Thanks again so much for watching, guys, and I'll be back shortly with a new video.